my name's Sam Bickersteth. I'm the chief executive of CDKN. Uh, CDKN is an alliance of organisations uh, delivering support to developing countries on the challenges and opportunities around climate compatible development. Um, and uh, ODI is, is one of our partners in the delivery of that, a member of the alliance. So it's very nice to be here in ODI with them. Tom Mitchell, who's the head of the climate change team here at ODI, sends his apologies. He's, he's actually online, I hope, from, from Brighton, but has been unable to join us today. Um, but a number of his team are with us, so, so very much part of ODI. Let me just clarify some process points for this meeting, um, besides the coffee. Um, that is that the event is on the record, so, so um, we do have a couple of journalists with us, so bear that in mind, please. Um, um, if the fire alarm sounds, it's for real, so please get out the building the way you came in. Um, if you could put your mobile phones on silent, that's a reminder to myself, actually. Um, that would be a good idea. Um, we've got some CDKN and other publications outside here. Don't hesitate to help yourself to those um, on your way out. Um, also have some publications from Bangladesh here, which you're welcome to take as well. <coughs> So that's the main point. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers, and hopefully we'll get le even more fantastic when Jennifer Morgan arrives in a moment. Um, and um, I would need to ask each of our speakers to speak like this to the microphone. Why is that important? Because there are a large number of people online. Welcome to our online participants. And they will be disappointed and go away and do something else if they can't hear us. So please use the microphone in this way. Um, so what, what, what are we aiming to, to talk about and engage in this morning uh, with this great lineup? Low carbon development. Um, when we started CDKN three and a half years ago, um, we were a bit hesitant in talking about low carbon when we went to developing countries. Was that on the agenda? Was it not just about adaptation and resilience? And I think what we've learned is that actually some of the strongest actions on low carbon development are actually happening in developing countries. Uh, and I think it's very important that we learn from that um, and talk about South-North cooperation to a certain extent. That yes, the UK has been a, a leading actor in action on climate change. And we'll hear from Edward Hogg from the Department of Energy and Climate Change in a minute. And, and Jennifer will tell us about the current uh, um, progress in the United States. But I do genuinely think there's plenty of evidence of developing countries embracing the, the low carbon agenda. But they're not doing that on its own. They're doing it as part of what we in CDK and call climate compatible development within their development and poverty um, eradication targets. Um, and that's very much what we found in working, for example, with the government of Kenya on their national climate change action plan in Rwanda, uh, where we've worked uh, over the last three years in, in developing um, the green growth and climate resilience strategy there, which is really moving into action as we speak. Uh, and Pippa, uh, who's our director for Latin America and Caribbean in CDKM, will be telling us about some of the exciting work we're doing uh, in Latin America around this. So uh, some of us, not many of us, but some of us have been at uh, Chatham House over the last couple of days and reminded really of the enormous challenges we have. The IPCC report, uh, the, the Working Group 1 physical science report will be familiar to all of you, I would imagine, at this point. It's very clear about the carbon budget, the limit around which we focus. And last night in Chatham House, we were debating how you can take into international negotiations a concept of zero net carbon by 2050. Sounds very ambitious, but it's a very good communication tool, a very clear ambition which we've seen some cities, some state governments, and some businesses claim they're going to reach. So why can't the world work towards that rather than 80% or some sort of in hard to communicate fudge between adaptation and mitigation? A climate resilient, low carbon world is the one that we really all know preaching, I think, to the converted in this room, is the direction in which we need to go. John Schnellhuber, on Monday morning in Chatham House from the Potsdam Institute, presented um, some of the results of the IPCC's uh, fifth assessment. 
and talked about the amount of energy that we're emitting in the world. It's equivalent of four Hiroshima bombs going off every second. It's quite a striking statistic. You know, the things one learns in conferences, you sit through a couple of things you take away. Four flashing Hiroshima's going off. 93% of that energy is being absorbed into the oceans, but that capacity is going to be peaked. And we know, we know some of this emerging science from the IPC's fifth assessment. So a carbon budget, a sense of limit, how do we all move, you know, prevent a kind of climate crisis rather than climate change? How do we avoid climate disruption on a really massive scale is the challenge that, that we all face. And we know the importance of a good global deal, a robust, fair um, and binding global deal uh, in 2015 to see real change from 2020. So today we're going to share some insights from Bangladesh. It's a great honor to have um, the, the greenest central banker on my right, um, Dr. Rahman, who's kindly joined us from Bangladesh um, and Copenhagen over the last couple of days. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and other colleagues to talk about how the financial sector can make a difference. We know the 100 billion uh, that's, that, that's been promised uh, is not sufficient. It's more like a, a trillion that's needed. Um, and where's that 100 billion itself going to come from? We know it's the pri private sector, the banking sector itself is going to play a critical role. So it's going to be very exciting to hear from you. We'll be hearing from, from Ron Benioff um, and Susanna Fisher about how, how at least developed countries and others are taking low carbon action and the importance of knowledge in that process. CDKN is a knowledge network led global partnership which Ron leads is, is, is a partner of ours in that sharing of knowledge and how can we accelerate action through that. Um, and Pippa will be bringing us some examples of multi-stakeholder processes. This isn't something that happens in a think tank or, or in a research institute but has to happen with the, with the stakeholders and we'll hear about that. Um, and we'll hear also how the UK is advancing and hopefully how the United States is advancing but I'm still reserving judgment of whether we hear about the United States um, depending on the traffic. Um, so, and I promise you Jennifer is in London, I have seen her, um, so, uh, so we hope that she will emerge in due course. So the idea is short interventions from the floor, just five minutes um, uh, please from each of the speakers because it's, it's a big panel and then I'd very much like to hear from you and our online audience and have a conversation about the challenges. Um, CD Ken's already written a paper on drivers and barriers to climate compatible development. We're not the only organisation that's been thinking about McKinsey as looking at this issue and its own work on resource efficiency. Um, but uh, there, are, there are things that are driving action and there are substantial barriers and blockers. And I'd really like to hear from you, your lessons and experiences around that because we're building up this, this body of knowledge on this. So I would like to turn to Dr. Rahman, please. And I think he has a presentation, Caroline that we can, we can look at. Um, Dr. Atiyah Rahman is the governor of the Central Bank of Bangladesh, um, and he has studied here in the UK as an economist uh, and a development thinker, has worked in academic organizations and think tanks. Um, but as you will see, I think, from his presentation, he's put um, development, inclusive, pro-poor, green objectives at the heart of a central bank. And I think that's a very exciting story which you'll hear from him. Uh, he's one of the very few, if not only, central bankers who, who went to Rio Plus 20, was there at the Doha COP, uh, and I think will continue to engage strongly in this process. So, Dr. Rahman, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.